Hey guys, I'm at the Sydney EV show right now. Sorry for the bad sound. Vehicle Degree is coming to Australia. And that's amazing news. This is gonna completely change Australia's grid. This is gonna be a revolution. We're talking about adding um, literally gigawatts and gigawatts of batteries to the grid. Not only is this a revolution for car manufacturers, they'll know that Australia has now regulated vehicle to grid. They'll know, they'll be, you know, the Chinese, the Tesla, they'll be told this is turned on in Australia. So obviously they'll have to consider putting that in their cars now. And this is going to potentially push manufacturers to do this. Not to mention the European Union is trying to push EV manufacturers, car brands to use vehicle to grid. They're saying it will revolutionize their grid as well. So this is amazing news. Hello, I'm Sam Evans. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you here. And honestly, the Sydney EV show here today, it's um, it's really busy. It's so much different to the last show. It's kind of gone to the next level. There's at least twice as many people. I'm going to do a quick walk around in a minute to show you guys what's happening here. Now, getting back to this vehicle to grid. The Federal Energy and Climate Minister Chris Bowen says that an agreement on new standards means that EV owners will be able to use vehicle to grid technology. This means that you can use your car battery uh, to power your house, which is insane. Because think about it, right? The average car battery is probably about 70 kilowatt hours and a Tesla Powerwall is about 13. So that's like having five or six Tesla Powerwalls to power your house. You would not need, you potentially wouldn't need to get an extra battery backup a power wall you could just run your entire house off your car and honestly i think a lot of people do this because they'll, they'll use their second car to run that run their household and they'll just use their second car you know when they need it which is pretty sparingly a lot of people use their second car they don't need it very often but even your first car even if you only got one car you can still use that at night time when you're not driving you can use that to power your house and that's when the sun isn't shining and your solar panels aren't giving you any energy so electricity is more expensive so using it at night time will save people and we're talking all across australia i think billions of dollars will be saved and this also means coal power plants will shut probably earlier than we thought um, we're going to look at fossil fuels being dead here in australia we i don't think we need this nuclear people keep talking about nuclear here in australia it's definitely unnecessary Federal Energy and Climate Minister Chris Bowen says that agreement on new standards means that EV owners will be able to use vehicle to grid technology effectively using their cars as batteries on wheels by the end of the year. Now guys, I was just, just saw the press conference here. There was someone from the media here that was just attacking the minister and he got in, I actually told him, calm down mate, that's enough. And he got right in my face and he wanted to fight me. This guy was absolutely mental and he was just at the minister just, and he actually forced the minister to leave the event because he was so aggressive to him. And it was really strange. I'm not really sure what the um, agenda of people like that is. But um, anyway, I was disappointed to see this guy. Uh, anyway, in a speech to an EV conference in Sydney, which, well, just happened today. And obviously, The Driven has an article of this. I'll put a link to The Driven's article on this topic. They got it up within uh, 10 minutes, unbelievably fast. He announced that this is going to be a change to the entire Australian grid, which is amazing. If you've got a car with vehicle grid capability and bi-directional device, you could be using that car to power your house before the end of the year, said Bowen. He said car companies can immediately start having their bi-directional devices tested to the revised standard, then apply to the Clean Energy Council to have their devices assessed and listed. So there's still a couple of steps, as you can see, tested to the revised standard, then apply to the Clean Energy Council to have their devices assessed and listed. So this will be a bit of still a bit of government regulation here and hopefully the government makes this easy it doesn't make it difficult for people to actually get these devices approved because you know companies are going to have to send them to the government the government's going to have to test them and then decide whether or not they're okay and who knows how long that will take so we are dependent still on the government to you know try to make this efficient try to make this process as fast as possible so what does this mean? Well, apparently you'll be able to pick your next EV. You won't be buying just a car. You'll be buying a battery on wheels. That's worth considering. Is there any current cars that you can use vehicle to grid for? Well, technically, there's just the Nissan Leaf. I believe uh, there is some plug-in hybrids, which, you know, that's probably not on the agenda for you guys, most people. So I don't think, but Tesla, they are planning vehicle to grid in 2025 in their cars. And we do know that the BYD Auto 3 and the current Tesla Model Y actually are capable of it. They just don't have the connection points in them. So vehicle to grid technology is held by experts as the driven as a critical part of a future grid dominated by renewables simply because of the extraordinary resources that will exist in the battery packs of millions of electric cars around the country. And they will provide both bulk energy when needed and critical grid services. So this means all that solar we're not using during the daytime that's been curtailed or being wasted. In fact, a lot of wind is being wasted as well. All of that can be stored and then we can use it in the peak time. 
6 to 10 p.m. when we're using fossil fuels, predominantly coal fossil fuels in those peak hours. So we can start doing what South Australia is doing. And in addition to this, we have literally billions of dollars of batteries being installed in Australia. So we're going to have all these EVs coming to the network. We're going to have these mega batteries coming to the network. And I think Australia is going to be, have a very, very green grid. By 2030, my prediction is 80% will be the average for renewables here in Australia. This is a, it's a big time. I'm really excited to see this, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Hopefully, other countries follow this and, and you know, have similar put similar things in place because that'll that'll encourage manufacturers to say all these countries are doing it they've all approved it let's build our evs with vehicle to grid technology and it's actually very very simple and easy to do for existing evs it won't take much work apparently the european union said it is only a 100 dollars part that's all you need 100 dollars part mm -hmm.